I myself am a filmmaker. My name is Aurel Avinu again, and I was a Christian until I fully deconverted. And now I like talking with other people who can help normalize and erase the stigma of what it is to deconvert with Christianity, which bring or any religion, which brings me to my guest, Jeff Tadlock. Jeff, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you got going on. Thank you, R. Rael. Thank you yeah. very much. Yes, and and I've seen your video and your page and very much admire it. Thank uh, you. Thank yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, well, you know, we share a very similar story. I was a Christian, very devout, uh, all of my life. Um, I'm in my 40s, so um, you know, I was I was a fully devout Christian all the way up into um, about 33, 34, where I really started to question things. Yeah. And uh, I call it uh, my great awakening. Nice. Uh, it's like you wake up and the experience was so profound when I started studying what it is that I believe. I had never studied what it is that I had believed ever before. Uh, is the audio OK? Yeah. Yeah. You sound good. OK. Yeah. OK. I see you looking. Um, but anyways, I began to study and I um, I really woke up to realize this is all fable uh, brainwashing. The mm. experience of waking up was so profound for me. I just wanted to shout from the rooftops. Absolutely. Uh, and essentially that's what I did. I mean, I, I'm an artist, um, primarily a musician, so uh, I'm not a scholar. So I, I look like an artist, I presume. I don't look like <laughs> most of your yeah, normal you <laughs> characters. That's what I am. And, uh, and so I just got online one day and started wanting to share with the world my experience. And lo and behold, people liked me and I just kept making videos. And here I am today, uh, one year into Stairway to Reason. We've gathered a large following. We've, we've got videos with uh, hundred, over 100,000 views. I mean, we just, nice. uh, it just worked. It just took off. And here I am, and I'll tell you what, the wonderful thing about doing what I'm doing is all the messages I get from people. I yeah. mean, people from Africa yeah. who message me and say, thank you for helping me wake up. So, so I mean, me and my team, where we're at, we've helped people. Uh, we, we, and I always, I always say to my team that if we only woke up one single person, it would be worth all our efforts. <laughs> and yes. it and we've we've done more more than that tenfold so yes uh, uh, yeah, and, yeah go ahead oh that's it that's it i have nothing more <laughs> that's it awesome yeah hey, so jeff you know what that sounds like um in in churches so i was involved in ministry my entire christian career <laughs> wow and, wow i wasn't okay yeah 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 and you know sometimes what we would say in Christianity is if we can save one person, you know, that makes all the difference in our ministry. And, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny how that's not unique to Christianity. You know, we, we're always trying to do something for a yeah. person to impact somebody's life. So that's not mm -hmm. unique to religion or to Christianity. These are things that they're human values. I mean, if, if you yeah. just look at it at a base yeah. scale, it's a humanist value. And uh, but what you said, I'm just imagining if a Christian watches this, they're like, no, 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 no. That's what we're doing. This is like, yeah. you guys aren't trying to save anybody. You're just trying to spread your philosophy. We're trying to save them. But Jeff, yeah. why are why do we look at it like how you described yourself as an awakening? Well, it's better to become awoken because one of the things is they do it just to get that convert. They want to wake yeah. people up just to get that convert. I want to wake people up so that people become more hypersensitive to people's true needs. People don't need religion. They need help. They need yeah. people to roll up their sleeves and do something. They don't need thoughts and prayers. Uh, they don't need Jesus. It does nothing for the world. Jesus is not out cleaning up the oceans, saving the whales. You're right, I mean, right. We need people to get off of this idea that Christianity is all about, oh, forget the oceans, don't care about animals, they don't have souls. 
forget about the oceans. We, we don't need to clean that up. Jesus yeah. is coming back. He's going to throw this right in the shit can. I've got kids. I, I right. want my grandkids to have a world. I don't. I think Christianity is poisonous, and we need to wake them up. And, and because when you wake people up, Christians think, oh, if you just have atheists, you're going to have a sinful world. Mm. Atheists aren't sinful people. Atheists don't want to hurt people. Mm. Uh, every atheist I've ever met wants to help people, wants, wants to create a better world for their children, and religion is getting in the way. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, when we get one person, it's much more satisfying because we woke somebody up from a delusion, from a fable, and now they can look at the world and say, oh, you mean animals matter. Uh, the earth matters. Yes. You know, things like this. So, yeah. And science matters. Okay, so that's not true. Let's try to figure out what is true. You know, the awakening brings so much to humanity mm. that Christianity is just like having a blindfold on, just walking around in a crowd, bumping into people, ha ha handing out a, a track. Hey, put a blindfold on like me. Let's not worry about the world. Let's just <laughs> convert everybody into this the, exactly blindness yeah yeah so. so there's marketing there's marketing to everything that that it, in the social public forums there's always marketing right but i always felt so i, I would used to be on uh, strategic planning teams for churches okay we would wow, do this wow that's fascinating yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you're telling me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um, some of these for, were for outreach and relief efforts. Um, mm -hmm. I was in Japan when um, the earthquake happened, caused the tsunami wow. over in Sendai. So I did a documentary wow. over there. Good as, for as, you. Yeah, Thank as, you. As, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was great providing yes. relief and uh, you Absolutely. know practical relief too, and all that stuff. So that's one of the better times of being mm -hmm. part of planning for something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then when you don't have like something in a in occurrence like that which causes humans to simply just unite just so people can survive the mm -hmm. marketing shifts see yeah. there we raise mar we do marketing to raise money to buy what we need to make sure people can live mm -hmm. but but when you don't have that we do marketing to ensure we get people into our church so they can tithe money and yeah. there are mm -hmm. tactics and strategies to employ to yes. make sure that that is successful. And I couldn't- You know how Jim Jones did it, right? T tell me about Jim Jones. I'm not very familiar. Jim Jones uh, murdered 900 people, had his entire uh, church congregation, children, every children were injected with poison, kill themselves. But he brought people into the church mm. through soup kitchens. Mm. So go on, just like what you're saying. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but- Yeah. It, and uh, Yeah. It, yeah, and there's strategies, you know, to do this to fill the chairs, and you know, the ultimate goal is is to find faithful, obedient persons mm -hmm. who will who contribute to the mission, to the vision. Um, right. And this means tithing. It means uh, participating in ministry and volunteering, and all this sort of stuff. And I couldn't help but think all the time, if our message is in itself so life changing, so pure. Why do we spend 90% of our effort just to get people in the door and try to get them connected somehow? Why isn't our message itself viral? Why do we have to create a marketing scheme to make it that? If it is life-changing, it's not going to need the top-notch marketing scheme for people to see its power and its impact. And so I started becoming disillusioned right. with that. And I enjoyed it in so much so as your contributor and like you're being creative and you're being productive and you're seeing results. Like I, I did enjoy that part. What I didn't enjoy though was the inauthenticity of what I felt was becoming the message or the face or the presence of my religion. Wow, that is very powerful. Uh, I, I have never heard it put like that before. So it, would you say, because I was going to ask you, I'm curious, what is your main, I know there's a lot of, there's a combination of reasons why people uh, deconvert, but what was your main, Was were you just sharing what was your main push to wake you up 
Sorry, Jeff. We just did this matrix thing where everything slowed down. Can you can oh, I ask that one more time? <laughs> we, we're good can now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. We just had uh, this slowdown. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm wondering. I'm running off of a uh, cell tower right now. I'm wondering if I should have tapped into my Wi-Fi. Uh, I've never had an issue before, but uh, I'm we, we to sound now. great now. Okay. Okay. Let me get me back on this uh, clip. So, yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, everybody kind of has a main reason for yeah. being budged into a wakefulness, like something caused you to question and to begin to wake up. Mm. And that was a powerful testimony I just heard from you. And I've never quite heard it like that before. Yeah. Um, was that uh, is that what really pushed you? Was that the main the main thing that woke you up? That wasn't the main thing. Um, that was a contributor to what I was realizing was Christianity as a whole. Um, I had experienced the same thing on smaller levels earlier as I was involved mm -hmm. in ministry, but like s saw right over it. I'm like, oh, this is this is how we do it, right? But you yeah. know, when, recently when I was involved in what I just explained. Um, it was on a much larger scale and we're not helping people. We're helping ourselves um, to mm -hmm. get people in the door and to get them to contribute and that sort of thing. But the primary right. reason why I deconverted um, was for a year I spent asking questions and um, I found out the church is not open to that. Okay. So I couldn't mm -hmm. express my skepticism or my doubt. And, and also um, I was a senior in a private Christian university studying for theology wow. and biblical studies and wow. I, I, yeah i found my professors would do the same thing i would often take what i found to be a very leftist view on the historicity of the stories that are in the bible and and i would do that speculatively i you know i'm i was not a subject matter expert on any of those things i'm going through undergrad and mm -hmm. um and my professors didn't like that because it is a christian university so my work would be censored and I would have to go back and fight the professors um, to make sure this is uncensored. Wow. So when it's exposed wow. to the other students, they can see what I wrote instead of the edited version. Um, mm. and, and all that kind of shifted me to a place where I realized the core claims of Christianity simply are not evidently true. And yeah. And yeah. that was it. That, that's, that was the peak of the mountain that I got on my Christian walk before I started going back down. <laughs> so, that, so you remind me of Bart Ehrman then. His story okay. is very si similar. And yeah. um, also, uh, I've heard many people nowadays when they go to seminary, they are, uh, it's not working for them. They're starting to wake up. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. We're seeing a shift in in the human mindset, really, with the new millennials and new generations coming in.